This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And on this day, October 2nd, 1980, one of the biggest boxing matches of all time took place. The current heavyweight champion, Larry Holmes, would take on the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, as Ali was trying to get a huge bounce and win for the third time the title. 15 round fight and Ali figured he would have the WBC heavyweight championship. He just wanted it. And all that. So the background was huge. Holmes was 35 and 0. Ali was 56 and 3. They called it the last hurrah. But the big thing about Holmes was that he was actually the sparring partner of Ali for a long time. Because he lived with Ali, they boxed hundreds of rounds with each other. Look for Ali to decision Holmes. People wanted Ali to beat Holmes. And shock the world. Anyway, Ali, after getting his revenge on Leon Spinks, who beat him for the WBA heavyweight title, Ali actually announced his retirement in June 1979. You know, you go out on top, fair enough. And then Ali said that he missed the ring. So on Valentine's Day 1980, he said he wanted to get back in the ring. In fact, Ali was going to fight John Tate, the new WBA champion, to a bout in June. However, after Mike Weaver shocked Tate with a 15-round knockout in March, Ali changed his mind and decided to fight WBC champion Larry Holmes and a lot of people said that Ali was going to fight Mike Weaver and all that but they said that Weaver's promoter had demands that were unacceptable the big thing was that John Tate would also suffer a shock loss again June 20th in Montreal losing to Canadian Trevor Burbank regardless people said that Ali and Holmes would actually fight in Brazil at the Maracana Stadium. It would be like huge. They fight in Brazil. The promoters said that Ali would get eight million and Holmes would get four million dollars. But everyone said it was a surprise and all that. Unfortunately, he said that setting up the ring and everything would destroy the grass because it's a soccer field. Because they pride themselves on soccer. But the belt was called off in May, and Ali and Holmes did take six figures home for forfeit money. Holmes decided to fight Scott Ledoux, who had beat him seven rounds. But Ali was still chancing it. Ali basically decided to fight Holmes at Caesars Palace October 2nd in Las Vegas. Ali would be given $8 million. Still, Holmes would be given $6 million. Caesars Palace would construct a 24,000 seat outdoor arena for the fight. But Ali's health was concerning. He was in the early signs of Parkinson's, there were some problems, and the Nevada State Commission needed Ali to be examined at, Mayo, at the Mayo Clinic as prerequisite to be given a boxing license. So Ali checked in, and there was some big information and all that. Ali had the degree of missing him when he tried to touch his finger to his nose. He had difficulty in coordinating the muscles used in speaking. And he couldn't hop on one foot with expected agility. But Dr. Howard determined there was no findings to say that Ali couldn't fight. So based on the report, Ali was given a license to box. Although, yeah, like, Maybe that doesn't have anything to do with boxing, but still. Ali would weigh 217 pounds, his heaviest since 1974. Sorry, his lightest since 1974, so basically he had lost weight. But Ali had used the medication and overused it. Anyway, there was a huge fight air, and everything was huge. Holmes and Ali would fight. Holmes proved him he was the heavyweight champion by 
dominating every round of the fight. Ellie was aging quickly, and, and the 89 degree weather in Las Vegas did not help matters. There would be huge jobs and combinations. Lots of people would criticize the fight. Howard Cosell for ABC Wide World of Sports said they had to stop it. The referee should just stop it. Anyway, Ellie had an increasing ability to mount sufficient defense and attack opponents. But after the ten but in the tenth round, Angela Dundee threw in the towel and Ali was mercifully taken out of the fight. It kind of reminds me of the dreaded Tatum Homer Simpson fight on The Simpsons when Homer couldn't do anything. About that. And Mo saves him. Anyway. There was some information that was never shown. And they said it was revealed that after the fight, Ali, after the fight, Ali was examined at the Mayo Clinic and the results were shocking. He admitted to tingling in his hands and slurring of his speech. And you know, Ali's wearing medical condition and all that. Ali's former ring doctor, Freddy Pacheco, said, all the people involved should be arrested. This was a nomination, a crime. Pacheco actually quit Ali's camp and he actually sent Ali's medical results to Angela Dundee Muhammad Ali and his wife Veronica at the time saying this is what's happening to you if you want to continue you have no shot in normal life but nobody replied to him in 2012 Ali met Pacheco for the last time and said you was right like he did say that a lot of times So anyway, the unnecessary punches he took were not stop the Parkinson's. Anyway, so that's what happened. Now there was some some fights on the undercard. Larry Holmes, his brother Mark Holmes, actually won a unanimous decision over Randy Rivers. Future heavyweight contender Michael Dokes knocked out Tom Fisher in round seven. Leon Spinks, the former heavyweight champion of the world, knocked out Bernardo Mercado in round nine, and Sol Mombi retained his super lightweight championship over Mo Watkins. So it was a decent card, but unfortunately the Holmes Ali fight was just terrible. And Ali, did he retire? Well, technically a year later in the Bahamas, he would fight Trevor Burbank and lose. But still, Larry Holmes kept his heavyweight championship to 1985. And, you know, he was a pretty good heavyweight fighter and one of the best of all time. Believe it. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.